All right, what is an MVP? MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product, and it is a delivery strategy designed around the idea that you can release a product with the absolute minimum amount of functionality in order to be able to provide value to the customer. After the product has been released, you can then take feedback from the customer to figure out what features they want and then continue to build those and drive your roadmap. For example, some people would say that the iPhone was an MVP. Apple released the iPhone with very few features. It had a browser and a calculator and a handful of other things. And then they waited for feedback from their customers. And one of the things that customers absolutely demanded all the way to the point where they started making their own was an app store. And that drove so hard the requirement for the company to go and make an app store. So Apple then released the app store to huge fanfare because everyone wanted it. That is a great example of a real life MVP. If you'd like more short videos on TechLingo, like and subscribe. There's more on the way each week. Now, some companies decide to make an MVP for all the absolute right reasons, just like I explained. Other ones do them for the wrong reason. And I don't want anyone here to confuse MVP with absolute hack because it's easy to do that. And a company can oftentimes say they wanna launch an MVP with it, but what they really mean is that they want something as fast as possible and they want you to make garbage. And that's not the way that it should work. So if you're on an engineering team and you're asked to make an MVP, there's a few things that you really need to keep in mind. One. Don't code yourself into a corner. Just because you're trying to release something that has a minimum set of features doesn't mean that you should be writing throwaway work. Throwaway work is never a good thing and it ends up making a bad product altogether. You should always be looking, even with the code for an MVP, to be building something that can be an evolution. The code starts out small and then you build upon it as you go, adding new features. Not trying to throw away the original stuff to go ahead and make version 2.0, the idea is that you made 1.0 and the next thing is 1.1 and 1.2 and so forth. Two, when you're designing an MVP, you should never build assumptions into the application. Always build the feature that you want and leave it open-ended for the next feature, but don't assume that you know what the next feature is going to be. I think you'll be surprised. You wait for the customers to give feedback on the product, and when you get the feedback, then you build the next piece. And number three, always keep in mind that the MVP release is always going to be the very first step of the product and not the last. It's easy to celebrate the launch of the MVP and assume that you're done, but of course you're not. You have to continue to build after that to add all these new features and functionality to build a successful tool that customers will interact with and that will in turn turn into a snowball effect where more and more people like the features, more and more people are requesting more features, and then you continue to expand the product like that. That's about all I have today for MVP. Until next time, happy coding.